Welcome to K9 Revolution Radio. Presented by K9 Revolution Dog Training. Enhancing the dog and owner relationship through education, balance, and peck instinct. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of K9 Revolution Radio. Today, we're going to be talking about equipment. Dog training equipment. <laughs> okay, good thing you clarified. I was like, what? I was what? Like, what equipment are we talking about? <laughs> Dog training equipment. I mean, we can talk about other equipment if you guys want, um, as time per- allows, but we're, we're going to focus on dog training equipment. So we're going to talk about the top five pieces. This is your top five. My top five. My top five that I chose mm-hmm. of dog training equipment. All right. Kevin's so, got a top five. Well, I got more restaurants to do. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I would imagine it's probably close to my top five. Think so? I think you guys probably would have most of these on your top five. Mm. It's off the chain on there. <laughs> this isn't the restaurant. Oh, this oh, is equipment. Oh. <laughs> this is, we're, not, we're, not, we're over you're the adding food. Top, you're, what, you're adding OTC to your top uh, five? I might have to, I mean, might have to may, redo one. You have know? To update. Well, ben keeps harassing me every time he sees me. <laughs> yeah, it's ben good. or Dave? <laughs> Dave just wants to go everywhere. <laughs> We just want positive feedback in all of our podcasts, okay? <laughs> Uncle Mike and Aunt Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> they were not happy with your last top five. Uh, so like the sapphires, well, though. Dave know. did like your top five, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a good top five. It's just, you know. Every group class, Dave comes up to Kevin. and uh, I got one in the know. bank every time. I'm like, where are what's we? Downtown? Top? All right, let's see. All right, Rutledge Cab Company. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Dave, if you're listening to this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your yeah. support. Thank you for keeping Kevin on edge at That's all right. times. That's right. I look forward to it. That's right. <laughs> so does he. He's good to go. We've, we've, uh, we've officially digressed, and we haven't even Sorry. gotten Sorry. into this episode. All right. He did say Top we were going to focus on equipment. I'm not sure it's yeah, happened yeah. yet. We have yet yeah. to. No, we haven't Top five. Let's go. Please. Top five training. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Dog training Chris's equipment. Top five. Dog training Chris's equipment. Top five. We don't My know. Five. We don't know top if five. it's Kevin's top five. It's Chris's we'll see. Top five. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see. So, I mean, obviously, when you're when you're talking when you're getting into the dog training game, right? The business. Uh, you you get a new dog. You can you start doing research. There's tons of dog training equipment that you're gonna find, right? So there's so much out um, that you, it can get confusing as to what's gonna work for me. What do I need to get? Do I need this? Uh, you know, some people say, hey, you need you need this kind of harness or this kind of leash or whatever. So it can get confusing. So that's why we that's why we want to do this list. This is really all you need to get started. Clear it up. Make it easy. Yeah, absolutely. Keep it simple. That's right. Kiss method. So. The way we look at equipment is they're, they're tools of the trade, right? Dog tools training is trade. our trade, so it's a tool. So just like, you know, if you're if you're building a fence, right? You Don't can, burn it down. <laughs> Do you know someone that did that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know someone that burned down. <laughs> that's, not, that's not good. Probably not using proper fire safety. Probably not. You'll probably see him at Thanksgiving, too. Oh, oh, oh. We won't, we won't, don't call him out, boys. <laughs> So tools, tools of the trade, right? So you're building a fence. Um, You know, you can do that with a hammer and nails, and that might be practical, right? Maybe a nail gun is going to be a little bit quicker, right? But maybe the hammer and nails might be a little bit sturdier, sturdier nails, right? So there's different tools for different occasions. So what's important is know what your objective is when it comes to dog training. What are your objectives? What's your goals? And now from there, decide what what pieces of equipment are going to help me, what tools are going to get me uh, to that objective so we're going to talk about the top five pieces of dog training equipment this is from the perspective of somebody just getting into this so this is like hey i I just adopted my first dog or uh, i just went to the breeder picked up my first puppy and i'm just now new to the world of dog training what are what are the bare bones basics that i need that i can i can set up a good foundation all right so getting into number one the first item is a collar all right so you need a collar gotta have a collar a must. That's your number one. I mean, this isn't in a, a particular order, so this isn't. <laughs> you just this, said it was number one. <laughs> well, this is number one to talk about. It's not like Bullet you know number one. the number one thing, because I don't think you can't. Like that's you, you can't. You can't because if you got a collar with no leash, you know, collar's no good, right? It's it's like all, all these build upon each other. That's so true. this is that's all true. part of you know part of the tool belt. What right? kind of collar? Yeah, what kind We're of getting into that. Okay. Yeah, 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 I, thought yeah, I, just, your, I thought it was just collar, and then you're just like, all right, next one. You guys got your notes up here? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, oh. I'm dead in the water right now. <laughs> I'm listening. All right, all I'm right. listening to so your top five. Collar, collar is the first item we're going to talk about, all right? Mm-hmm. 
So definitely a must, though. you got to have a collar. So a collar, allow, it's obviously something you clip the leash to, right, and gives us control during our training sessions. All right, so we can, we can begin to teach them with the proper collar how to respond to leash pressure properly, right? So a good quality collar will also be important uh, when you're at a point in training when you're ready to introduce accountability, which we've discussed in, in previous episodes. <coughs> So just like everything else we talked about, there's a multitude of options for collars, right? So they have choke chain styles, prong collars, flat collars, nylon slip lead styles, uh, and then even you could probably put harnesses in this this category, right? A lot of people use harnesses to walk their dogs. But list goes on. So what what are, what do we need to use? What we use is uh, it's called a fur saver training collar. Um, the company is Herm Springer. I'm assuming that's a German company. Um, but that's what we use. Good stuff. So it is a choke chain style collar. Um, so it has kind of chain links. The links are larger than most of the uh, the choke ch- choke chain style collars that you'll see at like, you know, your local pet stores, things like that. Um, th- those lar- larger larger links will. <laughs> I can't, larger. I can't, I can't, can't talk. Lure. The, lure. The, the, <laughs> the, lure larger, the larger the larger links, links prevent <laughs> pinching. Uh, you know, the dog's fur and skin. Right. So we like these collars because of their effectiveness and their durability. So these collars will allow you to add and remove any type of pressure very quickly. So, uh, for example, if I'm starting a training program with my dog, they don't know any expectations and they start to walk away from me. Right. At some point, they're going to reach the end of my leash and it's going to it's going to go tight. Right. And that collar, the first saver training collar is going to add pressure. It's going to tighten. Now, I can change my directions or I can use a food lure, right, or f- food lure to get them co- to come back into my direction. As soon as they do, that, that, when that leash slackens, uh, that, that first saver training collar is going to release that pressure very quickly. And that's super important because you're teaching them to how to respond to that pressure, to move, move with it instead of against it. Um, Quick note, and, though. Yeah. If you put the first saver on properly, Bingo. Good. That. Yeah, good point. If you put it good on point. improperly. It won't do that. It won't do so that. what do you do? Go to Canine Revolution Dog <laughs> Training YouTube and look up the uh, training collar video. Yep. Got to put it on properly. We got a video of a properly. handsome young man demonstrating. <laughs> Whoa. Demonstrating. Oh, how is to that, do that that old old video? Where I didn't even <laughs> I think, think it was is. him. Super yeah. old. Yeah. 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 I was like, who is That's that? Chad <laughs> That's Chad when he was like 12 years old. <laughs> 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 All right, back back on track. All right, so <laughs> yeah, so yeah, there is a there is a wrong way to put that on. So yeah, that's a good point. Um, but yeah, when used properly, this will allow you to add and release pressure very very quickly, which is super important and not something that all uh, of these other collars that are out there on the market will do, right? So uh, the the fur saver collar is a reliable collar that is comfortable for for your dog to wear day in and day out, but it also has a practical use that helps you accomplish your training goals right so this is that's exactly what you want to look for when you're when you're looking for what kind of collar to use something that's effective for training um, and that is fair and comfortable for your dog right so a flat collar which is probably what you see you know 95 percent of dog owners have everybody's got a flat (coughs) collar somewhere whether it's on your dog or in the closet Uh, that's just your standard dog (laughs) collar (laughs) that's where for the the dog right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like closet. yeah, that's where mine are. I don't use them, so they're in the closet. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> this caught me off guard with that one a little bit. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying, like, to uh, trying to keep you guys awake here. <laughs> the the point being, whether you use a flat collar or not, you've probably got a flat collar. All right, so this is the co- the most common kind of collar that you see, um, and it, and it is it is comfortable for the dog, I think. Um, but it's not as effective in, in accomplishing your training goals. So, um, you know, it's not going to add or release pressure. It just pretty much stays whatever size that you have it adjusted to. Um, I've seen countless dogs slip out of flat collars. Uh, you know, at any sign of, of any kind of pressure, they, they walk out to the extent of the leash, you know, feel it go tight, they slip out of it, boom, they're gone, right? So that's obviously not going to be productive for, uh, for your training goals. Uh, Prong collars are, are another collar, uh, and we do we have used prong collars. They are an effective tool, right? So this is something that can be effective in accomplishing your training goals, but now we look at the comfort side. might not be the most comfortable collar for your dog to wear every day, all day long, right? So it, it, that, that collar is more uh, designed to, you know, address a specific purpose, that kind of stuff. Um, so 
while there may be a, a use for any collar out there, we find the fur savers are the best all around for effectiveness and comfort. So, you guys got anything to add on collars? No. Yeah, good to go. Good to go. I like the fur saver. All right. Second item. Not in any particular order. Is there a prong collar in your closet, too? Or? <laughs> well, <laughs> I was going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, That's some advanced stuff. I mean, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather not go into, you know, my personal life. Yeah, we don't want to uh, know everything that's in that closet. But but short answer, yes. Okay. <laughs> I do. I do have one in the Poor closet. Chris. Gotta get away from Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. This is going downhill. <laughs> what's number two, boys? We All right. Know. Second item. We're on the edge here. Second second we item. I want to know what's in your closet. Is a good leash. Hmm. All right. Gotta have a leash. In your closet? In Six the- foot leather leash. <laughs> well, well, I mean, if you want to jump ahead. Okay. <laughs> That was pretty specific. <laughs> <laughs> so the leash is the leash is our means of guidance and communication during the tra- the training process. So this is a most. <laughs> <laughs> Jed's cracking up. Keep going, keep going. I'm listening. He's working through it. It's getting a little hot out here. Oh my god! Oh, there we go. Jeez. Oh boy. On off, on off. <laughs> All right. So just just with the collars, there are endless options for leashes, right? <laughs> So they got he can, this. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Keep it. I right, better wrangle him in. <laughs> All right, endless, endless op- options for leashes. All right, so a couple of the ones that we see: there's nylon leashes, leather leashes, retractable leashes. Ugh. Kevin's favorite, metal leashes, and so on. Right. I had a retractable for Lulu when I first got her. I think everybody's at one time or another had a retractable. Looking back, I'm like, this is an 85-pound pit bull. Why would I even do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so on top of that, uh, the different sty- styles of leashes, uh, you can you can get leashes from 3 foot all the way to 30 foot and even longer, right? <clears throat> so what we use is a 6-foot leather leash, as Kevin uh, jumped the gun on us here and let us know. 6-foot uh, le- leather leash, uh, specifically the one from Signature Canine, which you can get on Amazon. Right? Shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're not sponsored. But, hey, you know, if you want Signature Canine, if you're listening canine, to hit this, us up. Hit us you up. can sponsor us. <laughs> we buy enough of them from you. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yes. So I've, I've found that the, uh, the leather leashes provide a great balance between durability, comfort, and manageability. And that's, that's kind of what you're looking for um, when you're looking for a good leash. So your leash has to be durable, especially if you're working with a large breed, right? I mean, I've seen nylon collars get snapped in half or, or break at the stitching, that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. you know, under a little bit of pressure from a large dog, right? Um, the, the retractable leashes, I've seen the mechanisms on those break. So like the, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, those retractable leashes have that little plastic handle and a little mechanism inside of it, and it, it goes all the way out to like 30 foot, and you can lock it and then retract it back in. Mm-hmm. Uh, garbage. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've seen those break all the time, uh, and you you literally have no control, um, you know, over your dog. So if your leash is not durable and is at risk of breaking or snapping, um, you're not. You're clearly not setting yourself up for success. So. Uh, a properly constructed leather leash, such as the one by Signature Canine, another plug, has, uh, has quality stitching and strong brass rivets that keep it from breaking or snapping. I've, uh, I have not had one that has broken at the stitching or the, or the brass rivets or but anything But there was like that, that cheap leather leash that you had with uh, Big Hank. Big Hank. That was, that, was right that was not that a signature canine. That was not a signature canine, canine leash. That was um, a cheap leash. That was a cheap, cheap leather. Right I think out. it was he pleather. He it right in half. It was pleather. Yeah, it was broke the rivets leather. right out of it, <laughs> right off of my body. I mean, yeah. if there's going to be a dog to do it. I mean, I mean, hey, hey, but guess what? Solid recall. Boom, no issues. Good, good, good training. Good. He had good a good thing trainer. Good thing that off-leash training was done by that point. He had, a, he had a really good trainer, you know. What can I say? It's a nice do-it-live session to figure out if it's good or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That squirrel was about to get it. <clears throat> <laughs> so comfort and manageability are also important. So the leash needs to be comfortable uh, to grasp and hold for long periods of time. I'm more, more talking about the comfort, comfort for you, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, needs to be comfortable for you as the handler. You do have to break it in, though. You do have to break it in. It's so, fresh leather when yeah. it comes to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah good so you gotta point. Put good the work point. in. First it's nice days. and stiff. Yeah. Yep, yep. You gotta, you gotta work you gotta it. Work it. You gotta work, work the leather. In. Break it in. Yep. Good to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm letting it go, Ben. I'm letting it go. <laughs> your leash should be easy for you to provide guidance to your dog. All right. So this, 
This may require you to take in or remove slack very quickly and efficiently, right? So while nylon leashes, some might argue that they're comfortable. I disagree. They'll but burn your hand. Yeah. Burn the you ever had a rope burn? Hand. Rope burn, right? Bad. Um, but they're also very flimsy and, and difficult to very manage, flimsy. right? So you can get them tangled up when you're trying to guide your dog, get good leash grips, all that kind of stuff. We do have a video on leash grips, too, with another handsome we young do. man. I did that. Check so. out the Canine Revolution Dog Train YouTube channel. Yeah. But but uh, nylon scroll to the bottom. Nylon leashes ain't gonna ain't gonna work, right? <laughs> Metal leashes, though they might be extremely durable, right? Very durable. That's that's not gonna get snapped, right? But they're not comfortable for not you comfortable. or your dog. Yeah, they're super heavy. Heavy. Yeah. You try to do like a yeah. You can't yeah. even handle that thing. Try to do like yeah. a left grip with it. Drag your dog down too. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, <coughs> it's weighted too. You know, yeah. so like you're pulling pulling. There's there's weight coming down on your dog's collar as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, and then, you know, the other one we talked about, retractable leashes, they don't really offer comfort, durability, or manageability. So, I recommend <laughs> staying away from these altogether. Um, well, probably unless, one of the most common. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately. But, I mean, unless, I don't know, if there's something specific you're trying to do with that, with the retractable leash, then go for it. But other than that. If you get like a dachshund with a small harness, it's like, all right, whatever. You could use it for specialized training, yeah, but uh, right, it's right. not going to be your like you're not using it as a leash at that point exactly. it's like to provide directional input and stuff right, you know right exactly yeah. so in any case whatever leash you decide to use make sure you choose one that is comfortable for you and your dog is durable enough to handle the specific dog that you're working with and is easy to manage and manipulate all right good to go all right so that's leashes um you guys got anything else on leashes to add you covered need a nice good leash leather Still leather. leather. Real authentic leather. Broken not, in. None of that fake stuff. The nice brass clip. Brass. Because then you can it. shine it. You can shine that. Can sh- I do. I have shined mine. Really? Blue magic. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you just use brass up? Uh, it's blue magic. It's better. Uh, it's a secret, secret formula. <laughs> <laughs> Citadel thing. <laughs> Uh, we can dive into that in another uh, podcast. It's going to be the R-rated <laughs> podcast. Yeah, we should have some. Uh, have have we some. should have some of our formal citadel, former Citadel classmates on a podcast. We could get some Citadel alumni. Talk about Blue Re- Magic. Revolution alumni. We got. We got some Citadel guys. We can. And we can talk about Blue Magic. Blue Magic. All the things you shine. <laughs> uh, bring it up at the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Keep going. All right. Third number three. Third item on the list is training rewards. All right. So a lot of people number do. Number three, huh? Number three. Again, <laughs> not in order. It's not in an order. This is just a bullet list. All right. Food okay. can be my number All one. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so a lot of people may not consider this equipment per se, but I would argue that it's probably the most important tool, especially when you're starting out in the training progression. A uh, very important tool to have. So you have to have a means of teaching your dog behaviors and reinforcing those behaviors. So in my opinion, best training rewards are food rewards. Mm. Right, Kevin? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kevin likes food. Train me right up. <laughs> <laughs> All mammals in some form or fashion are motivated by food, right? Use this to your it. advantage when you're training your dog. So, yes, you can also use other means of rewards such as verbal, physical praise, or a ball, a tug, that kind of stuff. Uh, they can be powerful powerful motivators as don't, well, don't, but don't. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but food uh, food is going to be more effective in teaching the behavior in general. In general, you almost so. got him. You almost <laughs> got him. Ain't, <laughs> ain't going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> so with food, we can use what we call luring, what Kevin calls luring, Lure. to move Lure. your dog into obedience positions and reward them at the exact moment that they have completed the desired behavior. Thus, properly communicating the expectations to them. Right. Just like leashes and collars, there are hundreds of training food reward options. So how do we know what to use? Well, I'm going to tell you. Mm. <laughs> you want to use you want to use something that is desirable to your dog first and foremost, right? That's the most important thing is they got to like it. They got to want it, right? If they don't want it, you can't use it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? If your dog has no desire to eat the said reward, then you cannot use it as a reward. So... Second, it needs to be relatively small. So this allows you to deliver a multitude of rewards and practice several repetitions in one, one session, right? So if you're using an entire hot dog as your, your <laughs> reward, you're going to be limited in the number of repetitions you can do because your dog will become full quickly or 
obese, right? <laughs> yeah, some some a, will keep taking those hot dogs. And it's going to take her a minute to eat it, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Dogs. Let's just exactly. Stacy. Stacy. I'm sure she'll get it down. She could, she, could, she could do that. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, bottom line, you gotta got to have a nice small piece that they can eat relatively quickly, okay? <clears throat> now, you can take that hot dog. You can cut it up into 10, 15 pieces, right? Mm-hmm. Now... I've got, I can get 10 or 15 repetitions of some behavior, and they're not overfed, uh, you know, or, you know, they're not taking too long to eat it. And they're working yeah. harder for it. Smaller piece, you know, they get that little taste. They want more and more and more. Bingo, yeah. That's a motivational factor yeah. as well. A- mm-hmm. Absolutely. It builds that drive, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so, third, we kind of t- touched on this. They, they have to consume it relatively quickly, right? So, once your dog is rewarded for a behavior, you want them to be focused on you and ready for the next step or the next repetition. So, if our re- reward is too large or it's, it's uh, too hard or too chewy, uh, they're going to take longer to consume it, right? So, this can cause them to lose focus on you um, and kind of lose your, lose your momentum in your training session. So, we use a product called Happy Howie. That can be found on Amazon as well. It's not sponsored by them either. Should um, be, again. But. Happy Howie, if you're listening, <clears throat> feel free to reach out. Yeah, because I need some, like, now. Yeah, <laughs> running, running, running low as in empty. Um, but, yeah, they have several options from, you know, beef, turkey, chicken, lamb. Um, go beef. Just beef. Well, go beef or go, go home. Go beef. Well, I mean, some people got to have other options, all right? Mm-hmm. I did have the lamb ones, though. They were I tried those yeah. one time. Well, yeah. too bad. I mean, they're they're actually not bad for you too. Like, I mean, yeah, they're you, good. Hey, you get hungry, you just reach. Give in them one. Way. Give yourself one. Reward yourself. Yeah. No issues. So yeah, happy Howie. That's great. Um, it comes in a large roll, um, and so you can kind of cut it up into whatever size pieces you need, right? So yeah, we said keep them small, but small to a cane corso it might be different than to a chihuahua, right? Mm-hmm. So I've also used. Uh, and we've all also used beef hot dogs. So like we talked about, uh, you, can, you can cut those up and just use them raw or you can it's dehydrate messy. them. Uh, it is messy. It's going to be slimy. Um, but I've found the slimier, the better. The dogs like it more. They gave me some raw ones the other day. Yeah. The dog couldn't even get it out of my hand. <laughs> she was so excited to get it, she was just smushing it yeah. into my you got to master the technique. <laughs> there's, there's a technique to the, to the raw hot dog. <laughs> you know. Or you can dehydrate them in the oven. Um, you know, they'll last longer that way, um, but they're still palatable easy to eat so both both of these options are uh, desirable by most most dogs Uh, they can be cut up into small pieces and they're easily consumed very quickly so in any case make sure you thoroughly check into the ingredients of what you are using what you decide to use as a training uh, tool uh, training food as all dogs are different and what their stomachs can handle you want to make sure it aligns with whatever your nutritional goals are for your dog you guys got anything on food rewards Happy Howies and hot dogs can't go wrong that's with it. that. That's all you need. That's go you beef need. or go home. If they turn down one, they usually take the other. Uh, <laughs> sure. And they're 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 uh, cheaper too than a lot. Like you can go to like a pet store and get oh, actual yeah, yeah, training yeah. treats. Yeah, they're no, 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 don't insane. Do that. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah, and that's like a pouch full. Yeah, for like yeah, twelve dollars. Yeah, yeah. A that, like I'll go through that in like two sessions. That's all just a marketing hype. Yeah. Whereas you can get like eight rolls of Happy Howie for like sixty bucks. Yeah. yeah. And you're not gonna have to buy anything for like two three months. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. I've never, you know, the hot dogs. Dogs will not turn those down. No. Yeah, I've never had one turn. Dogs love the hot That's why I always go to him if they won't take my house. Yeah. Hey, yeah. get some hot dogs on you. <laughs> <laughs> then you just mix it up, and before they know it, they think they're eating hot dogs, yeah. but they're getting mm-hmm. howies. Yep. That's right. Bane likes my hot dogs. <laughs> he does like that. All right. I and mean, sometimes the texture of the howies, the yeah. dogs are kind of thrown off yeah. by it. But if you get them started with a little bit of hot dog, and then you mix it with the howies, yep. and they get used to the howie texture. Yeah. Or sometimes they're a little thrown off by the texture of the howie, so I'll just like throw it on the ground, let them like. You Check know, it sniff out. Sniff it, chew it. Once they have one, they're like, oh. He's like, all right, this is they're pretty hooked. delicious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they're yeah, freaking hooked. They want, they, want that, they want that Howie. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. That happy Howie. Yeah. And you can show them, too. You know, if, if, <laughs> you, like, if you eat the food in front of them and let, they see you <laughs> eating them. That's true. Yeah. They'll, they'll true. eat it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've been doing. Observational learning. It's like yeah. when you're feeding the baby and you're like, oh. Yeah. But you, like, don't actually eat it. Why wouldn't you actually eat it? Baby food? Yeah. It's good that for you. Texture, man. Mm. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> all right. We moving on. Moving, moving on. <laughs> and Ben's losing it. Woo, that's all we wanted for the day. <laughs> all right. We need a camera on Item Ben during <laughs> this podcast so everybody can watch him. Item number four. It's really just him looking at us shaking his head. <laughs> Fourth item on the list is a good quality bait bag. I was about to say. Bait bag. Good to go. Right? So, or means of containing and delivering your food rewards efficiently. Right? So, 
This equipment item could go hand in hand with food rewards, but I think that it is worthy of its own category. That's why it's on the list, right? Mm -hmm. So we've discussed the importance and power of using food rewards. Just as important is your timing, right? When and how you deliver those food rewards. Ideally, you want to mark behavior within half a second. So if I tell my dog to sit or I lure my dog into a sit, as soon as his butt touches the ground, I'm going to mark that behavior and say the word good. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to follow that with a food reward as quickly as possible, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you don't want your dog to become distracted or break the command while you're in the process of rewarding. Is everybody okay? He's trying to recover <laughs> over there. <laughs> what is he doing? He's dying. He keeps, he keeps putting himself further and He's further into it. it. <laughs> oh, my God. He's got issues. <laughs> So the whole the, in, <laughs> the entire process should be handled quickly so that you can reset, get ready for another repetition. So this is why you need to have the means of delivering food rewards very quickly. So you don't want to have to have like loose food rewards in your pocket, right? Or in your cargo pocket or in a Ziploc bag that you're holding in your hand while you're trying to manage the leash and manage everything else. Uh, this can take too long to get your rewards out and ready to deliver to your dog. So a bait bag is just a small bag that you can place on your belt or around your waist. So you have quick and easy access to it. Um, there is also like they have like these training vests that you can use uh, that are big, deep pockets. You can use those. I think those are a good option. I don't really mess with them. I prefer the bait bag um, because it's smaller. You can put it in the refrigerator, <coughs> depending on what type of food rewards you're you're using. Like you got raw hot dogs, you probably want to refrigerate that overnight. Yeah, definitely um, don't want those in your pocket. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely don't want those in your pocket. I've had them in my pocket before. I have. <laughs> I've terrible. done it, but. I've got like the Ziploc bag in the pocket. It's so hard yeah. to just get one. I've out. had them. I've had them you loose in my the pocket. Yeah, you no. can't do this. Let's say zip. Kelly was mad when she had to do the laundry. <laughs> <clears throat> but that's where that prong collar came into play. <laughs> <laughs> it all circles back. <laughs> uh, if you do choose to go with a bait bag, ideally you want to look for something with some sort of hinge system. So this will allow you to open and close the bag very easily. Um, but it'll also allow you to keep it in the open position or keep it in the closed position, depending on what you're doing, right? So if it stays only in the open position, uh, you know, if you're moving quickly, maybe you're doing some tug or something else, you know, all your rewards are going to be <laughs> spray jumping everywhere. out. And then now guess what? You've lost focus because your dog's trying to pick up everything <laughs> off the floor. And you got Bob in your yard at night. Yeah, you, <laughs> you got Bob the cat sneaking over, whose actual name is Belmont, by the way. But, uh, <clears throat> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is cat. <laughs> All right, so I've I've been using the Pet Safe brand bait bag. Uh, you can get that through Amazon. Um, I think it's like sixteen dollars. Pretty pretty durable. I I use it. I won't say it lasts forever. I use it every day. Typically get about a year out of it before yeah. I got to replace it. Um, I don't know. Do you know what the brand is on the the other ones? That I have you, no, no idea. No clue. Yeah. Yeah. So just I mean. Do some research. Like I said, the Pet Safe one, that's the one I've been using. It works great, um, and, it's, and it's relatively cheap. So. Yeah, but all's well as well. All is well yeah. as well. All is well, Somerville, well. as in as well. well. Yep. All is well, Good to comma, go. as well. Go there for your nutritional needs mm-hmm. and your bait bag needs. That's right. That's right. Good to go. Cool. The other thing about a bait bag you forgot to mention. What's that? It's nice if it has a little pocket in the front for your poop bags. Oh, yeah. That's true. A little utility action. Yeah. And your uh, business cards. Some built in where you can just pull it out. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 You ever see those? they got like the little compartment. Yep, yep. Feed the bag through. Good to yeah. go. Because you know what I must. hate? You know what I absolutely hate? Straight poop. No, I hate straight poop. <laughs> and I hate uh, the poop bag canister rolls that people put on the end oh, of their leash. Oh, yeah. Because it gets in the way of my leash grip. You oh, know what I'm saying? Oh, my gosh. Dude, If I see, when I see those on one of our leashes, I rip it off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them. I don't like them. <laughs> we used to have uh, one of the assistants used to always do that, put yeah. it on the Yeah, end that's the thing. one I would rip it off. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. I think, I think they might have eventually caught on. <laughs> <laughs> I hate those things. <laughs> uh, and it's, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. You just unclip it, take it off. I mean, it's yeah. clanging around it's everywhere. Yeah. If you need to get a good you know, grip, you know, if there's a bad <clears> situation, yeah. or right. get them out of a situation, then you just got that. That's in your way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's in your way. Yeah. Pro- so, improper leash handling. No. You know? That's right. So Other yeah, thing about the bait bag. You want to make sure you clean it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And anytime I get in my truck, I take it off. I'm not sitting on it. I'm Every, not going to uh, or anything in there. Well, see, here's here's where I run into the issues is I'll put sometimes raw hot dogs, sometimes dehydrated hot dogs. I go to training, right? I do my sessions. You just keep filling it up. At the end of the up, day, there's still up. a small layer. <laughs> so, yeah, I just fill up new, new no, ones on top of it no. so that nasty one's down at the bottom. No, so, no, yeah, that can no. get nasty. 
That can get real nasty. Yeah, that can get real nasty. You saw that layer of how we got pulled out the other day. Yeah. Didn't you? <laughs> they can get the best thing to do: <laughs> use all your food rewards once it's empty. Flip that thing inside out. Take it to the sink. Scrubby it. Scrubby, scrubby it. Take scrubby one of the what is scrubby? Scrubby. scrubby it. Good to go. Sponge. Sponge. Scrubby. Yeah. Soap. 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 Water. Wash it, wash it off, <laughs> dry it off. Good to go. Trust me, you're gonna want to do that. Air out, or it's gonna have some uh, interesting odors. <laughs> yeah. Put it in the fridge at nighttime. Yeah. If you're keeping treats in it, especially with the howies, because if you get like dig them out, there's like residue on your fingers after. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Yeah. That's the sign that you need to clean your bait bag. No, no, no. You should have cleaned it way before <laughs> that. <laughs> that's just when you get down to the corner, you gotta yeah. get that little chunk out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I save that one for me. That's the <laughs> best one. Yeah. It tastes so good. <laughs> All right, moving on. <clears throat> Last item might seem odd when talking about training equipment, but I do believe it's vital to any training system, and that's a kennel. Hmm. Right. So well, you may not think about this like when you're as a piece of equipment when we're out doing our training sessions, but um, it's very important, right? So it's it's vital to the success of your training goals. I, I truly believe that. So... Because this list is tailored towards the basics, right, needed to start a training program. Management is a huge part of that, that training process. Uh, so you have to have a way to manage your dog's behavior in between your training sessions and exercise. So until you're at a point in training where your dog understands the expectations and, uh, you know, there's a system of communication, we recommend using a kennel anytime you're not actively working with them or at least keeping an eye on them, right? That being said, it's also important to incorporate the kennel into your training regiment, uh, especially in the beginning. So if your dog has never experienced a kennel or even has a negative association towards the kennel, it's crucial that you provide them you know, positive experiences with the kennel. Uh, use your food rewards to lure them uh, into the kennel if they seem hesitant. Feed them in or near the kennel to start to create a positive association uh, towards the kennel. Dogs are den animals, and giving them a place like a kennel to call their den is is perfectly natural. So as far as as far as the type of kennel, really doesn't matter as long as it can contain them and serve its purpose. So they have very really nice stainless steel kennels. I don't remember what those what those brands are called. Mm -mm. There's um, a bunch of different, brands. but they're pretty <laughs> pricey. Those are those are very expensive. Very pricey. Um, you know, there's metal and even plastic kennels um, that are that are out there on the market. So we will we typically will use a, just a standard wire kennel that you can find at your local pet store, right? Um, this is probably the most common type that we see. But again, any can serve its purpose. You just want something that's going to contain them to help you through the management process while you're training. You guys got anything on the kennel? Great tool. Yeah. Good tool. Great I mean, piece yeah. of equipment. Strictly from a management perspective and them having a positive association with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I can't get Lou out of her freaking kennel. <laughs> I yeah, open like, it up, tell her to go spot. She looks at me. She's like, nah, I'm good. I'm like, man, I'm like come on. Oh, yeah. She's got, like, you know, a nice bed in there. And yeah. Blankets oh, yeah. and all. So she's a little spoiled That's in there. That's her spot. That's her spot. Hey, yeah. It's time That's to play. I heard, time you to put a, uh, I heard you put a tablet in there like, <laughs> and you're streaming Netflix for her when you're at work. I did see a video on Facebook where they did that. It was like a little <laughs> a little me. fireplace because they had built, like, a nook, like, under the stairs for oh their, like, gosh. pug or whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, dude, it was uh, nice, though. I was nice. like, man, I'd, I'd like to sleep yeah. in there. That pug doesn't care about it. No. Right? <laughs> but uh, from a human perspective, right, you know, right. makes us feel nice. Oh, nice. All right. Well, cool. Well, that That's it. There, That's the top five pieces of training equipment. Obviously, um, you should always be looking to advance your training to the next step. So that's going to mean, eventually, getting new equipment, different tools, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, remote collar would be one off the top of my head. We, we just did an episode on that. So, like, you're always going to be adding stuff. But I think if... Like I said, from the perspective of a new dog owner, um, you know, you just adopted a dog, just got a dog, you're just looking to get into this, you can't go wrong with this list. This is going to set you up for success, and you can kind of move up from there. So Keep a roll of poop bags in your bait bag. I probably, You know, I, I think <laughs> I probably that. should have taken one of these out and put poop, poop bags bag. on, you on the You could have put a bait bag with the food and just kind of. Yeah. Actually, yeah, we're yeah, just going to redo yeah. it. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> uh, stay episode. tuned. We're going to redo this episode. <laughs> Poop bags are, poop bag. you got to have them. Poop bags you are gotta, paramount. That's poop number bags, one. got to yeah, have poop bags. That's number one. Oh, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> but, yeah, thanks, th thanks everybody, for tuning in. Uh, make sure you like us, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you like us. Like us. Hit the like button. Do you like me? Check yes or no, please. <laughs> There's only one option. Yes. <laughs> I always blacked out the no. Everybody likes Kevin. <laughs> oh, Everybody true. likes Kevin. You take Kevin out in public, 
You can just let them go, boys. Yeah. Everybody's flocking to yeah. them. That's what. That's because we're we're running the other way. <laughs> we can go. We just leave. <laughs> yeah, I like okay, go talk, up go talk like, to oh, Kevin. They're, they're gone. Go talk to Kevin. Oh, well, Chad was my ride, but I guess not anymore. Me and Chad are eat, eating rolled quesadilla. <laughs> I still remember that day, too. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Going live, boys, going live. Cool. That was part of your training process. <laughs> it worked. Figure out how to talk to people. I saw y'all eat. I was like, yeah, I'm on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe right. we should have an episode where we just tell stories that way people understand what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, no one has any be... idea of the story that we're just yeah. talking about. We'd have yeah. to have a visual recreation at the same time, though. That's a lot of work from a CGI perspective. Yeah, you make it. I'll just put a wig on. All right, all right. Play two different roles. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. <laughs> Hit the like button to like us. Subscribe, rate us, give us some rating, five stars. That'd be nice. Um, you got a little overboard on this episode. Let us know <laughs> what you guys want to see. There. What you want? If you if you guys want to hear like random ramblings and things like that, if you like that, let us know. If you don't, let us know. We'll we'll shut these guys up. You know? Kevin wanted to go see your closet. We have plenty of footage of random ramblings, by the way. That's true. Uh, I've been probably actually deletes. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Probably. We're doing it again right now. <laughs> All, right, All right. I'm closing buddy. us out. Make we'll sure see you guys like next us. time.